What can make splits with no legs? A banana. What can you call a car that never stops? Our cargo. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Duel Replay Series and today in episode 2 we got some spicy replays as always an update on the Candy Bowl back there so I'm thinking about ending the Candy Bowl giveaway on April 20th of 2420 so the giveaway still goes be sure to go hit the like button on this video so you guys can enter into that amazing Candy Bowl giveaway that I mentioned in the first episode and hopefully if I don't die by April 20th of 2420 when you know how many years that's ahead of we can finish the candy bowl giveaway so be sure to hit the like button down below guys for that epic candy bowl giveaway anyways let's get on to the first clip of today's you get duelings dual episode replay thing whatever so in the first uh, replay in today's episode, we're going to be checking out this replay from Dork Magician. Thank you so much for sending over this replay. And as you guys can tell, Sylvan's making a comeback. This is going to be a Sylvan replay versus whatever this Yubel is playing. I wanted to show this replay last week, but due to the fact that my video got way too long with showing this replay, I decided to cut it out. But I made sure to introduce it in today's episode. So without stalling for too much time, let's go into this replay. It's also been a week since I've seen this, so um, you know it's still kind of new to me, but I do know who wins. Anyway, so we first get one set of the Kushmuro face down very cool next up we see the Ubel activate the Fire King Island activate Fire King Island's effect to sacrifice the Ubel to add Fire King Avatar Yaksha you know what it is Ubel has been around for a while now we're gonna be checking out the Terra Incarnate pop it out into the field just like that boom bada bang Ubel in Terra Incarnate is gonna destroy the uh, Sylvan Kushmuro and due to that we're, this Sylvan player Dork Magician is not gonna be able to activate his Sylvan's effect which does suck so that he's just gonna draw and pass turn due to the hand of Methus this Ubel player is going to be sacrificing both his Ubel's Hair Incarnate and Hannah Methods to go into Phoenix. And then Phoenix is going to go try to attack Dark Magician directly. Luckily, though, Dark Magician had a Curry Bone Hand to deal with that. Next up, Dark Magician is going to go draw. He's going to set down another Kushmuro, hoping for the best, but due to the fact, or no, what he's going to do is he's going to sacrifice another Yubel, add Av Fire King Avatar Barong, and then special summon back Terra Incarnate. So we have both Terra Incarnate and Yubel on the field, which is crazy, and then Yubel just passes turn because Yubel kind of got the picture already that he's going against Sylvans, and you don't want to attack into Sylvans because if Sylvans pop off their effect and get mill all their cards, that's not that good. So next up, though, we see um, our Dork Magician set another Sylvan card. This time is going to be Sylvan Snap Dragon, and he's just going to pass turn, and then Yubel is going to be special summoning back the Sacred Phoenix onto the field. It's fake Phoenix's effect's going to pop, sadly destroying the uh, Fire King Island, then all the Yubel's uh, monsters get destroyed. Luckily, though, Terra Card is going to special summon into the Ultimate Nightmare, which is going to be pretty scary right there, and then the Ultimate Nightmare is going to attack into the Sylvan Snap Nast Dragon, because keep in mind, with the Ultimate Nightmare, Ultimate Nightmare is going to make it where any damage you would have taken, your opponent's going to take instead, or basically the attack points of the, your opponent's monster you take the damage instead so that's gonna happen our dork magician is gonna be taking 900 points of damage but sylvan snapdrag is gonna have effects gonna activate and it's gonna use marsh leaf to get rid of the ultimate nightmare and throw it into the graveyard and then at fire king avatar bronx is gonna attack dork magician directly dork magician is only at 1300 attack points let's see if he's gonna be able to make a comeback he sets another card he sets a magical merchant phoenix's effect is gonna rise up and phoenix is gonna go swing into the magical merchant and this is where things get pretty bad for you bell so magical merchant is gonna be able to mill pretty much the entire deck as you guys can see a bunch of sylvan madness is going to go on and i'm not going to be able to compensate the entire thing that is for sure but all the sylvan stuff is going to be milled milled and milled until dork magician adds his anti-magic arrows to hand Next up, Peacekeeper's gonna activate its effect. Guardiok's gonna activate its effect. Uh, Snapdragon's gonna activate its effect. Snapdragon again, and Marshleaf. Like, all these effects are gonna be activating right now. Now, so, this was an interesting play, in my opinion. So, Dark Magician pops the Sacred Phoenix of Nethys because he knows he wasn't gonna get over it with any of his other monsters. He actually pops that card instead. And then what he's gonna be able to do with one of his other Sylvan effects is basically special summon Kushmuro in defense position so he doesn't lose the duel, which I thought was a pretty cool combo right there. Next up, he's gonna draw into... I forgot what he draw onto, but he didn't draw to the combo piece that he needs. He summons Guardioke, activate Carraway's effect, discards Peacekeeper, activates Switcheroo, has a 50-50% chance to get the card that he needs, but then he draws back into his Marsh Leaf, and that was really bad for our player. Next up, we're going to see the Ubel activate the uh, Spear Karibo uh, to protect himself, and then Phoenix is going to come back onto the field. Next up, what Sacred Phoenix, or what this Ubel player is going to do is attack with Fire King Avatar Yaksha, and then attack with the Sacred Phoenix. Boom, bada, bang, there you go. A bunch of damage ensues. Now, this was a card that your Dork Magician won, 
of the Drontsu was Raging Mad Plants. And as you guys can see, things are going to go ham. It's going to special summon two Kara Waits, activate Raging Mad Plants, goes for the Anti-Magic Arrow, and then goes for game with all that damage right there. That was an awesome replay, in my opinion. And thank you so much, Dark Magician, for sending over this replay. It's nice to see an old meta deck kind of get a little bit of a rise up again and tries to win against the meta. But then again, Ubel is kind of low on the tier list, but still, nonetheless, this was a sick duel. Thank you so much, uh, Dork Magician, for sending in the replay. Next replay you're going to be checking out is from my boy Mold from my Discord. This is going to be Gustos versus Cyberdarks, and as he says, it is Gustos versus Cyberdarks with a ton of wacky shenanigans. This replay was actually really sick, and while I'm not the biggest fan of Gustos, I gotta say, he played Gustos in a more aggro kind of approach, and it honestly makes the deck look a lot more fun than these stall players that I've seen um, in the ranked PvP and all that stuff. So let's go check out this replay. So as you guys can see, Mold started off with setting down a Wall of Disruption, and he's going to set down a Griffin. No, he's not going to set down a Griffin. He's going to set Gusto Gildo, and past turn. Next up, we're going to see this Zane set two cards face down and end his turn. Next up, we're going to see your boy Mold activate Dark World Dealing, discard Griffin, uses Griffin's effect to special summon into Reese Whirlwind and Gusto, and goes for the Synchro Summon of your boy, Stardusto Dragon, which is kind of a spoil because we haven't seen Stardust Dragon right here. But we're going to check out Stardust Dragon, and I'm going to show Stardust Dragon's animation on today's video because Stardust Dragon is a, a really cool boy. I know I shafted him in my top five, you know, favorite signer animations or whatever. Like, that. I made a top six on the best Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, 5D summoning animations. And I put him in fourth place, but I still like Stardust Dragon, so we gotta show, we gotta show it. Next up, we're gonna see, um, your boy, uh, what was it, Mold? He's gonna summon, he's gonna summon into, um, the Gusto, uh, Pilto, or Gusto right there. And then he's gonna special summon his Gusto Gildo. And then, as you guys can saw right just now, he activated, uh, Zane activated his Drowning Mirror Force and shuffled back Stardust Dragon to the extra deck and the other Gusto monster that, uh, your boy Mold just summoned. I wanted to pause a little bit ago, but, you know, that went too fast. Anyways, though, as you then you see Zane's gonna activate his fusion reserve and add a uh, what is it cyber dark horn so it's pretty sick right there and all Mold can do is just end his turn because he's already on his end phase anyways next up we're gonna see Zane activate polymerization fuse three of his cyber dark monsters and go into cyber dark dragon cyber dark dragon is gonna go on the field boom bada bang there we go and cyber dark dragon is gonna activate its effect and give himself a big boost as you guys can see we have a 2900 cyber dark dragon and he's gonna use the effect of cyber dark cannon to mill ling lang or whatever I don't know how to fit pronounce that. Anyways, now we're going to see the Gusto um, Gusto Gildo to uh, activate its effect to special summon Gusto Squirrel from the act from the main deck. Mold's going to draw. He's going to summon into his uh, Descend of the Gusto and then summon um, back from his graveyard a Gusto Gildo. Next up, he's going to go into his Degasco uh, Gusto, which you can see right here. And this Gusto on the field, this 5-star one, is going to shuffle back two Gustos from the graveyard into the main deck to destroy Cyber Dark Dragon, which is really sick. Next up, he's going to go for another Synchro Summon with the 3-star tuner and the 5-star Synchro monster to go into Stardust Dragon yet again, which is honestly so sick. Take flight, Stardust Dragon. Welcome back to the field, baby. Activate the Tides Bind to give him a little boost and attack Zane for 2,600 attack points. Next up, Zane's gonna do a crazy thing. He's gonna activate Cyber Dark Claws effect to add Cyber Dark Impact from his main deck to his hand. Activate Cyber Dark Impact and shuffles in a bunch of his Cyber Dark monsters to go into Cyber Dark Dragon yet again. Very cool right there. Next up, we're going to be seeing the effect of, what's it called? We're going to be seeing the Cyber Dark Cannon equipped, and then we're going to see Cyber Dark Horm equipped, the Lei Jing, and then we got two big Cyber Dark monsters on the field, but luckily, Wall of Disruption is going to save Mold's life, and basically, due to this, the Zane can't really do anything from that. And since Zane notices that he can't do anything to win this duel, he just crashes the Stardust Dragon and does an honorable Sudoku. F's in the chat for the Zane, but seriously, Mold, thank you so much for sending over this replay. This replay was sick. Let's go move on to the next replay. So, I think it's going to be the last replay of today's episode. I'm not too sure yet. But anyways, though, this is from my boy Frost. That is from my Discord. And he sent over this replay called Clayman Saves the Day. And I'm going to be honest, I really love this replay because I just find the goofiness of this replay great. Uh, watching this replay is a nice change of pace from what I'm used to when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. You can kind of tell this is kind of a lower ranked duel. But nonetheless, this re replay is a ton of fun to watch. So, thank you so much, uh, Frost, for sending over this replay. Let's get into the replay. So, the uh, enemy Jaden is going to be going first right there. And he's going to be setting one card in face down defense position and setting one face down. Next up, our Jaden Frost is going to be normal summoning Blazeman. Activate Blazeman's effect to send Wild Heart to the graveyard and tries to go attack its Fortress Warrior but as you guys can see, Fortress Warrior does not die because he takes no battle damage and destruction for a couple turns. Um, or like he can't get destroyed right away basically. So 
There's that right there. Next up, at the enemy Jaden's gonna summon a man with the white hat, and then he's gonna switch his fortress warrior to attack position, and then Jaden or Frost is gonna get to 3,000 life points. Next up, Frost is gonna be setting fit down a Wattweiler face down, and then activates as polymerization fuses his two elemental hero Neoses and his clay man to fusion summon into Vision Hero Trinity. Which, as you guys know, Vision Hero Trinity is gonna get that double of the attack points. And I personally thought that Jaden was gonna lose right here. The opponent Jaden's gonna lose right here. But as you guys can tell, with Fortress Warrior, take no battle damage from attacks involving this card and due to that um this guy just didn't lose right away but this Jaden, the opponent Jaden, is at four or six hundred life points and as you guys see he's gonna activate the wear the hero drills effect next up for whatever reason i don't know why this Jaden player is playing it but he activates copycat he he summons he uses copycat when this card summon target to face the monster opponent controls the attack and defense become equal to the monster's original attack and defense which is just wild which is just wild so he crashes into copycat kills trinity and then our frost summons into uh, elemental hero clay man attack position and then attacks into Jaden for game. I don't know what that Jaden had face down, probably a bluff or something like that, but honestly, even though that replay wasn't insane at all, just the fact that you know the Trinity came out and that the copycat happened and all sorts of fun stuff like that, I thought it was pretty ridiculous and pretty funny right there. So that's why I decided to showcase this replay in uh, today's episode because I personally thought it was a fun one nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of the Yu Gi Oh! Duel Links Duel Replay Series. This was episode two, and I appreciate you guys watching it and all that fun stuff. If you haven't already, as always, be sure to go hit that like button down below so you can enter into that amazing candy bowl giveaway. Um, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links content and other content from me. And yeah, that's kind of it for today's video. Of course, if you want to send your dual replays, be sure to join my Discord or Reddit. You can post them either or. If you join my Discord, be sure to post it in the hashtag dual replay section. And if you uh, post replays into my Reddit, just post it wherever. I don't really care. I'm really bad with Reddit, but if you just post it in there, I'll eventually find it. So there's that right there. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. Also, another thing too, I'm not sure if I'm going to introduce it in today's um, episode, but I think I'm going to start doing bonus memes or bonus replays, stealing from bonus memes from PewDiePie. But yeah, if you guys reach a certain like um, threshold and likes in these uh, type of videos, I might start doing bonus replays and showcase one extra replay for you guys instead of just having three replays only. So keep that in mind for next episode. Be prepared to like the next episode if I decide to do that. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching today's Yu Gi Oh! Duel Links Duel Replay episode. Thank you so much, and I'll go see you guys in the next Yu Gi Oh! Duel Links video. Peace!